Welcome all, and thank you for joining the WEIM Governing Body General Session Meeting. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and all attendee lines are currently muted to reduce background noise. There will be sessions for public comment throughout the call, at which point you may press the raise hand icon on Zoom or press pound two on the phone only line to enter the public comment queue. With that, I would like to formally begin today's call and turn it over to Chair Andrew Campbell. Please go ahead. Thank you, Silas, and uh, welcome to the March 7th meeting of the Western Energy and Balanced Market Governing Body. Thank you all for joining us virtually today. So today's meeting is being held specifically to consider an advisory opinion. Last year, we put in place a new process for advisory opinions. The process includes holding a governing body meeting at least two weeks before the ISO Board of Governors meeting where the item will be considered. This provides time for the Board of Governors to fully consider the governing body's input before acting. And then on March 19th, we'll be holding our regular Western EIM governing body meeting with additional agenda items. Now I'll turn it to Corporate Secretary Roger Collinton for the roll call. Thank you, Chair Campbell. Um, and we'll start with you for roll. Chair Campbell? Here. Vice Chair Konzioka? Here. Member Decker? Here. Member Prescott? Here. And Member Wagner? Here. Excellent, all here, present. We have a quorum and we may move forward. Back to you, Chair Campbell. Okay, thank you, Roger. And now we're on agenda item one, general public comment. So uh, this is for any public comments uh, that are not related to uh, items on the agenda. Uh, Silas, if you could pr please provide the direction for entering the queue. If you would like to enter the public comment queue, please press pound two on the phone only line, or you may press the raise hand icon at the bottom of your screen on Zoom. There are no hands up in the queue at this time. Okay, thank you, Silas. Uh, now we'll move to agenda item two, and I'll hand things over to Roger Collinton, Vice President, Chief Counsel, and Chief Compliance Officer of the California ISO to introduce this item. Thank you, Chair Campbell. Uh, it's my pleasure. It, let me just start before I hand it over to um, our presenter today that, as you noted, this is a, an advisory opinion um, special meeting in order to give two weeks in advance. And in this particular item, um, it's around the the Governance Review Committee proposal on EDAM governance that was approved by the board and the governing body in a joint session a little bit over a year ago in February of 2023. And where we are at now is part of that GRC proposal had kind of a trigger as to when the governance would be implemented, the EDAM governance, and that trigger had to do with a conclusive FERC approval of our EDAM tariff filing. So we are now at the point of implementation, and that means that we can take the GRC proposal and we can actually add those to the governance documents that um, set out the rules and how we operate within you know governance uh, format, and that almost a ministerial task in the sense that what we are doing is meeting the, re the specific requirements of those documents which each have their own kind of approval requirements and so with that introduction let me turn it over to Dan Schonkweiler our assistant general counsel uh, for corporate and litigation who has been working on these types of issues for many years and uh, specifically on this one so Dan thank you Roger uh, good morning Roger pretty much covered it, but uh, let me try to unpack that a little bit. We're, um, we're here about implementing EDAM governance in the approved proposal. And it's specifically, this was phase three of the work of the governance review committee. And the earlier phases of the governance review committee's work, they considered a broad range of governance issues. Of, and um, phase three was in contrast quite narrow because it was focused only on what additional changes would be needed uh, once EDAM became effective. And the, the Governance Review Committee uh, put in place a trigger for implementing these. And the trigger was that they shouldn't go into place until after FERC conclusively accepts the 
uh, EDAN tariff amendment. Well, that, that's happened now. And so we're, we're ready to uh, move forward with amending the government's documents. Uh, can we go uh, move ahead on the slide, please? Go to the next slide. I'll just talk through that one. Thank you. So uh, there are four governance documents um, at issue here. Each of these governance documents uh, listed on the slide specifically requires approval from the board to amend those documents. Now, two of these documents also require the advisory input uh, of the governing body. And it, it's appropriate to get that advisory input on all four of these documents, given that the, that the Governance Review Committee's EDAB governance proposal was jointly approved by the board and the governing body. Um, next slide, please. The, to review the, the, the EDAM governance proposal has four basic concepts that get implemented uh, sort of mix and match in these governance documents in, in different combinations. First, there are there's adoptions of the delegation of authority, that is the definition and the scope of joint authority and uh, the advisory role to adapt it to the expansion to the data ad market in EDAM. There are also some uh, proposed additional procedural steps in the event that the board were to approve a policy initiative uh, against, the, uh, against the advice of the governing body. The second part uh, is concerns the ISO's legal obligations to regional stakeholders to counter a misimpression that some stakeholders had that uh, perhaps California law might obligate the ISO to advance the interests of California at the expense of other uh, market participants, the Governance Review Committee crafted a, uh, a bylaw provision that uh, specifies that the board is obligated to weigh the interests of all stakeholders within the market footprint, and it defines the market footprint. Um, there are also uh, additional steps about stakeholder engagement through the Regional Issues Forum and, and prior, uh, in particular prioritizing discretionary initiatives and providing input on that. And then finally, there's an additional step in the selection process for members of the governing body uh, to confirm that sitting members who seek reappointment are uh, qualified for the enhanced responsibility associated with EDAN. Go to the next slide. Thank you. The, um, I'm going to review how these changes go uh, or are implemented in each one of the documents as reflected on the red lines that you have. Um, there, I want to note there wasn't a lot of room for interpretation here. On the uh, delegation of authority changes and on the uh, bylaw provision about the legal obligations to regional stakeholders, uh, the governing, or sorry, the GRC worked those issues through very carefully and, and in detail and even specified the language to be added to the documents. Um, and in all cases, the, these tightly conform to the language of the proposal. Uh, the, there are a few additional non-substantive changes in the documents that were necessary to reflect the creation of EDAM and the, the rebranding of EIM is WEIM, so you see those changes too. Uh, we are we limited the changes we propose we're proposing here to those two categories. Uh, next slide, please. The so in the charter for how do these go in each document? In the charter for EIM governance, the substantive changes include the enhanced scope of joint authority um, and also the new procedural steps. Uh, following any board decision that adopted a proposal against the advice of the governing body. It also includes the new RIF roundtable discussion about prioritizing discretionary initiatives and the new stakeholder sector in the RIF for EDAM entities. Next slide, please. Uh, the corporate bylaws include the new bylaw provision clarifying the ISO's obligation to regional stakeholders and also uh, in Article for the expanded advisory role of the governing body to include uh, proposals that apply to the day ahead market in addition to the real time market. Next slide, please. Uh, in the guidance document, 
the, the substantive changes there are a revised description of the joint, joint authority and the advisory role of the governing body, um, and also a supplemental background to note how the, just explain how, what the document is in the background, how the original delegation is being expanded under EVM. Uh, and finally, the next slide, please. thank you. The selection policy uh, adds the new step to be followed when a sitting member of the governing body seeks reappointment. Slide, please. I anticipate I may have to answer some questions here that uh, where we're heading is to is that management's going to recommend that the governing body provide an advisory opinion supporting the proposed implementing amendments as reflected in the red lines to these four documents. Great, thank you, Dan, for that presentation. And, and thank you so much for your prior work, of course, supporting the, the Governance Review Committee as they um, kind of navigated through through all the, the complexities and considerations they wanted to address. I you know, got to work with you closely when I was on the, the Governance Review Committee. Uh, now I'll, I'll provide an opportunity for any questions from uh, governing body members. Either jump in or raise your hand if you have questions. All right, uh, seeing no questions, I wanted to then provide opportunity for public comment. Uh, Silas, could you please instruct attendees how to enter the comment queue? If you would like to make a public comment, you can press the raise hand icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Or if you are dialed into our phone only line, you can press pound two on your telephone keypad. There seem to be no hands up in queue at this time. Okay, thank you, Silas. So now we'll move kind of toward the uh, kind of our advisory opinion. Um, and this can uh, you know, take multiple forms. The you know, management has presented a uh, proposed an advisory opinion, uh, which is uh, you know supporting these changes. And we just need to choose if that's a written or verbal advisory opinion. If that's the direction we go, uh, certainly members could propose other advisory opinions also. Um, so I think as a, I'll kind of open up for any initial discussion or if anyone wants to move the management advisory opinion or, or another advisory opinion right now. And Chair Campbell, this is Rob. I would uh, like to get things started here. And um, I would like to suggest two things. Um, I, I generally support the motion as written and I would like to suggest that we provide a, a written uh, guidance to the Board of Governors as opposed to verbal. My thoughts on that are it sends just a, a, a stronger message. I mean, we, we know that whatever we, we actually take it today that the Board of Governors will hear. I believe that at least by, and if it's simple, taking the, the action to provide it in writing just sends a, a better message um, on behalf of the governing body to the Board of Governors. Okay, thank you, uh, Vice Chair Konziolka. So do I take that as uh, you're, you're moving, you're moving uh, that recommendation? I will move this motion as uh, with the written option but I just wanted to explain the reasons before um, anybody else comments on or seconds that motion um, and, and for the reasons why. Okay. Uh, we'll definitely provide opportunity for yeah. discussion and questions. Is there a second on that motion? This is John. I'll do a second. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then opening to kind of questions or uh, any reactions to that. Motion, uh, Member Decker. So I also was going to um, say that I thought that we should do a written advisory statement. Um, well, I know you'll deliver it verbally as well, Andy. I think that for the record, having something in writing is important to this, that we support it. We believe the Board of Governors will support it and that it's been long in coming to get these changes in place given with the EDAM tariff being in, in put in place. And now we've got um, parties who are stepping up into the EDAM. So I think it is important 
that it is in writing in writing and that um, we move this forward. Okay. Thank you, Member Decker. Uh, Member Wagner. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm in support of this this motion and uh, completely agree with the um, the idea of putting it in written format. Um, that's our job, and we are doing our job, and we are reflecting um, the governance changes that have been worked on. Um, I have a couple of observations that I wanted to make, um, Chair, and I wasn't sure if you wanted if, is it okay to go Please. now. Yes. Sure. Um, so what we have before us today is largely the work of the Governance Review Committee. And as Roger noted earlier, it is, it's largely ministerial. It is putting in place um, what was recommended into the various governance documents. Um, but I also would note that this is really a, a milestone for EDAM. Uh, this is an important step. It really memorializes um, that transition, but it's also an important milestone for governance in general. Um, <clears throat> the GRC, um, by all accounts, was a lot of work, um, several years of work that went into it, um, not only for the members, but the stakeholders who were consistently showing up to meetings and meaningfully engaging and, and giving us a lot of food for thought and a lot of things to wrestle with. And I especially appreciate the, the commitment of time um, of, of the members of the GRC, as well as the stakeholders. And I would be remiss, and I, I can't underscore this enough, um, Bert Gross and Dan Schockweiler spent so much time with us. They had to take our recommendations and um, convert it into something that lawyers could uh, live with, um, and they did an excellent job. And so I'm very supportive of um, the, the changes that they have proposed, and I, from my experience on the GRC, say that they're consistent. Um, you know, as we continue on, I, I, I see governance um, evolving and, and continuing to improve. And I think we need to be a part of that, be aware of that, and be listening to stakeholders um, and continue to perfect the governance of EIM, EDAM, and, and our, um, our, our next evolution of whatever comes next. Um, and a lot of these changes are already in practice, which I can appreciate. Um, but I I just wanted to just note that we will continue to strive to um, make this the best governance possible. Um, you certainly have a commitment from me and just wanted to use this opportunity, though this is ministerial, to to share some, some of my thoughts. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, thank you, Member Wagner. Uh, Member Prescott. Yeah, thanks, Chair Campbell. So my comments are quite a bit in line with what we heard from uh, Member Wagner. I want to add my thanks, particularly to Dan and Bert and all the ISO staff that, that worked to convert the, the thought process that went on in the Governance Review Committee to actual, actual document changes. I actually had the privilege of serving as a non-voting member on the Governance Review Committee. And I believe these changes that we have before us represent the intent of the approved GRC phase three recommendations. Now these changes are tedious, exact wording and placement matters, but they're very significant as they really usher in an exciting new era in Western electricity markets. So therefore I plan to vote to advise the Board of Governors to approve these changes and I support a written response. End of report. Thank you, Member Prescott. Uh, Member Decker, did you have any uh, additional comments? I have a, a comment probably for after the vote, Andy. Okay. Uh, Vice Chair Konziolka. Um, Chair Campbell, thank you. Uh, I'll be brief. Um, I believe that um, Member Wagner <clears throat> and Prescott uh, covered a lot of what um, I would like to uh, think and say here. Uh, first of all, I want to just start off by appreciating that we are addressing this opportunity now. I think there's plenty of room to not move forward. And I think staff and, and working with the Board of Governors and the governing body to, to move forward now is very positive. Um, 
And so my appreciation for all those who, who think that this helps in moving things in, in a way for um, future governance changes. And uh, I think it also sends a, a good message that it's trying to, to encapsulate those um, imp that, that input and the needs as we move forward and, and, and continue to, to evolve the governance for EIM and for EDAM. Um, but as stated, we're moving forward just as the uh, recommendations and anticipated by the GRC. And so once again, the GRC should be commended. Um, I, I think it's very positive that uh, the language on the bylaws uh, on the CAISO obligation for all regional stakeholders is a big one. Um, I don't think that it necessarily changes anything, but it does state that there is that obligation. And I think that that has a lot of meaning and is something that all of the participants that, that are involved can hang them, you know, uh, a code on and can also ask about. Um, I also appreciate that the expanded role for the RIF is being formalized. Um, you know, we've seen this change ever since last February. It's been evolving and moving forward in anticipation of this, but now it's becoming formal and official. And I think that is also extremely positive. Um, not for today, but I do believe that the governing body in the future, we should be looking at the name of the WEIM governing body as the, the name for this um, governing body for the EIM and for the EDAM and any possible other future changes. Um, so, so lastly, I will conclude with, um, I strongly support and am pleased to move this action forward and uh, make this official. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Konziolka. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to support this motion. I was, I concur with comments that came before me, but I was certainly excited to see FERC approval of EDAM and now enactment of these governance changes on the timetable recommended by the Governance Review Committee. Uh, you know, I appreciated this opportunity to just review the changes again in detail as you know preparing for this this meeting, and just echoing. Vice Chair Konziolka, I mean, that new section, administration of markets and the bylaws, the ISO, I think that's really important that that's now in in, in writing, uh, just that the, you know, obligation of the ISO to to weigh the interests of all stakeholders in the footprint. And another part I wanted to highlight is just the additional weight given to advisory opinions in the ISO's board of, uh, ISO board's deliberations. So the revised charter says that if the IS, if the governing body advises the board not to adopt a proposal, our opinion must be discussed in a joint meeting. And if the Board of Governors moves forward with the opinion anyway, um, then we have the option to retain outside counsel and write, include a written statement in the filing to FERC. Now, whether or not this new process ever needs to be exercised, um, what, I, what I think is important about it is it codifies the significance and weight of governing body advisory opinions. So I appreciate that now that's a new uh, area of of sort of authority that we'll be keeping an eye on. Uh, so now I'll turn it over to Roger for the vote. Excellent. Um, let me go ahead and read it for the record so we have it all clear that we're moved that the WEIM governing body will provide written advisory input to the ISO Board of Governors supporting the proposed revisions to the corporate bylaws, the charter for EIM governance, the selection policy for the WEIM governing body and guidance for handling policy initiatives that may come before the WEIM governing body, as discussed in and attached to the memorandum dated February 29, 2024, and as discussed at today's meeting. And just to confirm, we have a moving party of Rob and a second of John Prescott. And um, then with that, let's go ahead and take the vote. So let me walk through. Chair Campbell, your vote? Yes. Vice Chair Konzioka? Aye. Member Decker? Yes. Member Prescott? Aye. And Member Wagner? Aye. Excellent. Thank you, Governing Body. Uh, the motion passes unanimously. Hey. Thank you, Roger. Uh, and then Member Decker, you had a comment. I, I do have a comment. So, you know, recall that when the GRC recommendations came before us, they were a joint 
this a joint uh, decision in which the Board of Governors and the governing body both wholeheartedly supported. And we're really pleased to see the changes and embracing um, the stakeholder process and all the work that went into that. Um, I was surprised that this was an advisory and not a joint decision in seeing these documents be changed because these are documents that clearly pertain to us. So I would I would like to see going forward at least some discussion about whether this these kinds of decisions, because we, there's potentially going to be other decisions along the lines that have to do with bylaws and charter, that at least there's a, a discussion about should those be joint when they pertain to the WEIM EDAM areas. All right. Thank you, Member Decker. So now we're going to go to uh, future agenda items, uh, which is the our final item number three. Any suggestions of future agenda items? Okay, so then before we adjourn, I'd just like to describe the upcoming meetings in March. Um, on Monday, March 18th at 1 p.m. Pacific time, the Regional Issues Forum is going to be meeting in person at the ISO's offices in Folsom. There's going to be a virtual option available. The focus is going to be on a roundtable to provide input on the ISO's policy roadmap with input organized by sector. The governance revisions that we've just uh, urged the approval of uh, require this annual roundtable. And I applaud the RIF for putting this into action promptly, even in advance of the rules being formalized. Um, which is great. Hopefully uh, you're connected with your sector about the roundtable and the sector liaisons are listed online. I understand there will also be a discussion about energy storage at that meeting. Um, the governing, some governing body and ISO Board of Governor members plan to attend. And then on Tuesday, March 19th, the EIM governing body will hold a meeting in the afternoon. Uh, then on Wednesday, March 20th, the EIM governing body and ISO Board of Governors will hold a joint meeting, um, after which the ISO Board holds their general session. And agendas for those will be coming out soon. So we hope you will join us for these meetings. And with that, I adjourn this meeting. Thank you. Thank well, you, Chair Campbell. Thank you, Governor. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.